Hey Outdoors family, have you ever wanted to know how to make homemade fire starters that might save your life? Stick around, I'm going to show you how. Hey Outdoors family and welcome to Tips, Tricks and Techniques. I'm DJ Infantry. So glad to have you with us. Today we're going to be talking fire starters and I'm going to show you two different ways to make two fire starters that are very easy and I'm going to use homemade items like you see here on this table. So let's dive right into our first fire starter. Okay guys, so our first fire starter has been around for a very, very long time. It's one of the most simplest to make and one of the easiest to pack with you, whether in an emergency situation or in your travel bag. Now, all you need are three key things. A Ziploc bag, some 100% petroleum jelly, and good old fashioned cotton balls. So here's what you do. We're gonna take our bag and we're gonna turn it inside out. Everybody knows that a cotton ball will obviously burn. Now, take our 100% petroleum jelly, scoop out a good amount into the bag, like so. Turn the bag right side out. Take our cotton balls. Stick them in the bag. Get them all in there. Make sure we don't miss any. Smush them down in there. Let's close the bag. And like I said, this is one of the oldest and simplest fire starters you can make out of household goods because most everybody has petroleum jelly and cotton balls around their house. But once you have it in a bag, you have the petroleum jelly with your cotton balls. Now we're going to smush it around. Careful not to pop the bag open. Get the petroleum jelly all over those cotton balls. Work it in there. Because the idea behind this now becomes you have the cotton ball that's already flammable. Now you have the petroleum jelly, which is a sustainer. It's going to allow this to burn longer so that you can put your wood, so that you can put your kindling, uh, your paper, whatever the case might be. The idea behind this is just for the cotton to burn longer thanks to the petroleum jelly. I'm going to keep smashing this around. And as you can see, as I'm playing with it, it's getting smaller and smaller. That's the nice thing with the cotton balls is, you know, once you're done with this, you roll this up and to next to nothing. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, and it's really easy to pack. So whether you're backpacking, whether you're storing it in your bug out bag, whatever it might be, this really, I mean look, take the air out of it. And there's enough fire starters to probably last you a good couple weeks. Right down into that. Fold it over like that, and there you go. So there's tip number one for our homemade fire starters. Petroleum jelly and cotton balls. Later on, we'll do a comparison test on this versus a standard cotton ball. But for now, there's our first fire starter. That easy, no mess, no mess. Hit that thumbs up button, let them know we're doing a good job. And drop a comment if you think this has helped, if you've ever used this before, have you ever tried one of these before? If you have, drop me a comment and let me know. Hey, and don't forget, if you aren't subscribed, subscribe right now. It only takes a click of a button. And if you are subscribed, guys, stay subscribed. We're glad to have you, and we've got a lot more in store for you here on Infantry Outdoors. But in the meantime, let's get into tip number two, our second fire starter. Okay, so we've seen our first fire starter. Very quick, very easy, very simple, very small to pack. Our second fire starter, a little bit more complex. Gonna need a few things for this one. We're gonna need, first of all, some tea light candles. Large size, small size, whatever it might be. A jar, 
dryer lamp, access of wood, any dryer in the United States, an old cardboard egg carton. Now it does have to be cardboard and not styrofoam. So make sure that you do not use the styrofoam kind. The styrofoam kind puts off a toxic fume. So you do not want to use styrofoam in any of your fire starter methods. So let's get into this method and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so first things first, let's get to the candles. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the candle and we're gonna put it in this jar. The reason for that is we're gonna melt down the candle. So we wanna pop the candle out of its metal housing as best that you can. Just like that. Break it up to where you don't get, you do not wanna get the wick if you can help it. So try to get the wick out of there as best you can, because we don't need that part. But we do want the wax. So we do the same thing with the other candle, push it out. This is why tea, candle, tea candles are such a great commodity. Break it in half, put that one in there, put that one in there. trash. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in the microwave. We're going to melt down the wax so that it's liquid form. And while this is melting, we'll get into our next step. So while the wax was melting, I took the opportunity to cut the top and the flaps off of our egg crate. Remember guys, make sure that it is the cardboard type and not the styrofoam. The styrofoam will cause toxic fumes. So what we're going to do next is take our bag of dryer lint. I'm a person that saves my dryer lint for perfect examples and instances like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take it and we're going to fill each one of our little egg clusters with a ball of dryer lint. And you don't want to stuff it too hard or pack it in too tightly because again you're going to want a fire to be able to start. off of these. As we all know, dryer lint is very, very, very flammable. And this, what I'm going to show you basically, again, is going to sustain the, the flame long enough for you guys to put your wood, to put whatever to get your fire going. Um, you know, I take my family camping, we buy fire sticks, they, they cost upwards of six seven dollars at some campsites you know this is something you can actually do with your kids make up a bunch of these with old egg cartons put them in the, the the camping bag and you're good to go for forever you know so once you stuffed all of your egg cartons and you get all of this nice fluffy stuff in here make sure everybody's got enough okay make sure they're all nice and Pack down. Again, the benefits of dryer lint. Great fire starter that you can roll up really small. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your wax, let's hope it's not too hot, and we're gonna cover each one of Move this stuff out the way. And we're going to cover each one of these with wax so that it waterproofs it, but also helps to sustain that fire starter as well. Let's see if I can do it without making too big of a mess. Blind guy pouring hot wax. Ooh, what could go wrong? Okay guys, so we got our fire starters made. We're gonna start with the first one as I told you. We're gonna do a comparison test. Here is our cotton ball soaked in Vaseline and we have a regular cotton ball. So we're gonna do the same thing to both balls, test them out, light them up and see which one lasts longer. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cotton ball and we're gonna fluff it out, open it up to where it can actually take a fire. Okay, and then we'll put that here in the grill. Then we're gonna pick one of our Vaseline balls. Same thing. 
morning. Alright, so on the left we have our regular cotton ball. On the right we have our Vaseline ball. So we're going to start, I'm going to give the regular cotton ball a little bit of an unfair advantage. I'll light the Vaseline one first and then the cotton one second because I know that the cotton ball with the Vaseline on it will burn longer. So, there's the Vaseline, there's the cotton ball. And you can already see that the cotton ball itself, by itself, is already pretty much burning out. It's burning quickly. The one with the Vaseline is still going, still going strong. Now this will give you time in an emergency situation or if you're stuck in the woods to obviously build your fire, to put your sticks, your kindling, your small pieces to start building that fire up. But as you can see, the Vaseline and the cotton ball are still going. guys so that was pretty cool the cotton ball burned for about three to three and a half minutes burn time which was really great because as you saw the cotton ball by itself really didn't last much past 30 seconds so the three and a half minutes of the cotton ball with the Vaseline burning should be plenty of time for you to get your kindling and small stuff going when you're making your fire so let's move on to our second fire starting method and see how it turned out okay so this is how it came out guys we got our wax all in there with our dryer lint as you've seen from us making it earlier this is how it turns out now your next step in this process is we're going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to cut each one of these squares out into individual squares now for this i'm just going to cut one out so that we can try it out and show you guys how the system works so just take your cardboard cut your already perforated squares just like that Now here's how you're going to package your fire starters guys. They're hard, they're covered in wax, they're waterproof. Now we're going to see what kind of burn time these end up with. Now these are pretty cool guys because there's more material to this obviously than the cotton ball. You have the cardboard, the wax, plus the lint. So let's put it on the grill, let's see how long it burns for. Alright guys, so here's our second fire starter on the grill. We'll put some fire to it and we'll see about how long this burns for and how much time it'll give you to make your fire preps. Alright guys, so that was about 15 minutes long for that second fire starter to finally burn out. How impressive is that? If you can't get a fire started within 15 minutes in your survival situation, you might be in some real trouble. Well guys, I hope you liked what you saw today on tips, tricks, and techniques. I hope you check us out each and every week here at Infantry Outdoors. Remember to hit that like button, give us a thumbs up, and hit that bell notification so that you're notified each and every time we post a video here on Infantry Outdoors. Well, as for me, Infantry, that's going to do it for this week's tips, tricks, and techniques. For Infantry Outdoors, we hope that this inspires you to get outdoors. We'll see you next time.